Greetings, my scattered sisters and brothers in the Lord. Trust you know the Lord is with you wherever you find yourself scattered today, and that you know that his presence with you is more than enough for whatever you might face today. We are with Jesus. We are before Jesus. Jesus has been on the cross for three hours, and he has heard people mock him. You know, if you're the Christ, come down and save yourself, and we'll believe in you. He saved others, but he can't save himself. He's heard this mocking, this ridicule. He has seen the soldiers who crucified him gamble for his clothing. And so it's now three hours into his crucifixion. And that's where we pick it up. Mark chapter 15, verse 33. And when the sixth hour had come, it's noon, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. So from noon till three in the afternoon, three hours of darkness, six hours time on the cross. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to Jesus to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. So after six hours of being mocked and ridiculed and incredible pain, Jesus dies. He breathes his last. And the words that we have from the cross, his final words, according to the Gospel of Mark, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I kind of wish Jesus would have prayed Psalm 23. That line comes from Psalm 22. Psalm 23, that's kind of what I wish Jesus would have prayed. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And even though I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Uh, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And yet here is Jesus on the cross in the shadow of death, and he's crying out Psalm 22, the first line, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In a certain sense, I am glad that he prayed Psalm 22. In praying Psalm 22, Jesus fully enters into kind of the human plight of feeling abandoned, forsaken by God. And maybe that's why Jesus prayed Psalm 22. That's the line that came to his mind as he is there experiencing all of the pain. Maybe he prayed Psalm 22 because he sees Psalm 22 kind of being played out right in front of him. So if I go back to Psalm 22, not only do I have that opening line, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But I also find this line, verse 7, all who see me mock me, they make mouths at me, they wag their heads. They say, he trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. And Jesus experiencing all of that mocking around him, maybe he feels like he's living Psalm 22. If I go further into Psalm 22, down to verse 14, the psalmist says, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircle me. You know, Jesus encircled by the Roman soldiers and all those who turned against him. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. And so maybe Jesus is drawn to Psalm 22 because he feels like he's living it. I mean, it is just playing out in front of him, and he can't help but think of Psalm 22. And he cries out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Having the whole psalm in mind because he's living out the psalm. But maybe also Jesus prays this one because he knows where it's going. If we go on down in the psalm to verse 22, the psalmist says, I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. 
You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. Why? For he, the Lord, has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. And so the psalmist starts out crying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But by, by the time the psalmist gets close to the end of the psalm, the psalmist is calling everyone to praise the Lord because the Lord heard his cry. The Lord did not abandon him. And maybe Jesus is anticipating the completion of the psalm as he lives the psalm. And so he cries out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because he's living the psalm and he's praying this in hope and trust that the Lord will complete the psalm with hearing him and rescuing him so that like the psalmist, he will call upon all to praise the Lord for not abandoning him, but actually hearing him and rescuing him. I think, okay, what, what do we do with this? And I think about it in terms of Jesus enters into our plight, our condition, experiencing forsakenness by God, or at least the feeling of forsakenness by God, but he doesn't go silent, he cries out. And I think that's one of the most important things for us to recognize is when we're feeling abandoned or forsaken, don't go silent, cry out to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That takes incredible courage and incredible faith and trust to talk to God like that. Jesus models that for us. Jesus lived that for us. And then where the psalm goes, yes, in the midst of excruciating abandonment, what the psalmist discovers is he hasn't been abandoned, that God has heard his cry. And that God is at work to exalt and to restore and to save. And I kind of think about Israel in the Old Testament, how often God works against them, not to destroy them, but to actually save them and transform them. And I think about how Jesus calls us to deny ourselves and to take up our cross and to follow him and to follow him daily. And how denying ourselves can feel like you're abandoning me, Lord. You want me to deny myself and to be crucified with you. And yet what we discover is that when we go through that, we're actually being saved. We're actually being restored to life and transformed like we could never accomplish on our own. It took God coming against us to save us and to change us. Jesus goes through that for us and by faith in him, we go through that with him and we experience that crucifixion that we might walk in newness of life. And so we call upon everyone to praise the Lord who calls us to such a deep radical surrender that it seems like God's against us, only to discover that in that surrender, God's actually for us and rescues us with new life. So wherever you find yourself scattered today, yeah, Psalm 23, it's wonderful. But I think today I'm praising God that Jesus prayed Psalm 22 from the cross. Because in him praying Psalm 22 from the cross, it means I can pray it with the same hope that he prayed it. And I can answer his call to take up my cross and kind of experience God against me in order that I might know that God is actually for me, rescuing me, saving me, transforming me for his glory. Well, give thanks that Jesus prayed Psalm 22. God bless.